Hello. Hello, are you still there? I'm back! It is good to be back! Hello! Oh my goodness, it has been a long time since I've sat in front of the camera and done this. I've kind of forgotten how to make a video. It's been so long, and apologies that it has been so long. It is not by choice. Long story short, I got really ill, and then I recovered, but then my camera broke. And so there were a lot of things stopping me making videos. The good news is, I'm better, my camera's better, and we're back. <laughs> this is the longest time in the eight years I've run this channel that I've not made videos for it. And when I say that although I didn't want to take a break, it has done me a world of good. I feel so energized, so creatively reignited for this channel. I just have so many ideas, so many projects that I want to work on, not just for this channel as well, but for the Magician Club, for the new podcast that I have. If you've not checked that out, make sure and go and check that out. The link is in the description. But without wasting any more time, we're going to dive into what this video is about. And it is about Blackpool Magic Convention, which, yes, I know was nearly a month ago now. Apologies, but I was going to make this video a few weeks ago, so I may as well make it now. I know the hype has kind of died down for Blackpool, but I still want to talk about it. What a convention. Ah, oh, Blackpool, man. It is always so much fun. Now, I do have some criticisms, which we will dive into, but I sometimes feel like I moan a little bit too much on this channel, so we're going to focus on the positives to begin with. Because overall, it was a really, really good convention. Like, the highlight of it for me was just meeting so many new people. Having people come up to me and say they watch the channel is always a massive highlight. If I met you at the convention, thank you so much for saying hello. It really means a lot. Blackpool is a magic convention on steroids, pretty much. Like, everywhere you look, there is something to see. There's someone doing an incredible trick that will fool the pants off you over here. Over there, there's a great magician who you admire and you want to talk to and just everywhere. There's so much to buy, so much to see, so much that it's honestly overwhelming. You can't see it all, even if you tried. In terms of the actual convention events, there were a lot of them, but a highlight for me would have to be Ben Hart's show. It was just such a spectacle, so dramatic, so much showmanship. Ben Hart always kills and this was Again, just phenomenal. In terms of the best lecture, obviously you can't go to them all, that's physically impossible, but of the ones that I saw, I would have to say the best was John Bannon's lecture on the Sunday morning. I love John Bannon, I love his style of magic, I love his approach to card magic and his sort of laid back, I'm gonna use that phrase in the most endearing way possible, his laid back approach to card magic. You know, there's no frills, there's no bells and whistles, it's just sort of directly what it is. I love that and yeah, I'm just constantly inspired by what he does. I was like scribbling notes on my phone during the lecture, just trying to take down as much as I could. Now we come to the all important question, what did I buy at Blackpool 2024? There was an extensive dealer's haul, certainly more dealers than I've ever seen at Blackpool and there were a lot of great things to buy. I ended up spending more money than I ever have at Blackpool Luckily, it's a reinvestment. I'll make the money back from gigs. I know that, so I didn't feel too bad about spending a lot of money. Normally, I don't really, actually. I think the last time I went to Blackpool, I don't think I bought anything. Genuinely, I don't think I spent a single penny. This year, I kind of loosened my rules a little bit, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna spend money, even if it's not a trick that I'll necessarily use in my repertoire, it's still something that I want to have, and still something that I want to learn from. Having just said that, of course, some of these will be in and out of my professional repertoire as I play around with them to make them fit. I'm sure some of them will land in there as permanent residents, um, but let me take you through what I bought at Blackpool. Starting with something I actually didn't buy, I was given this. This was a deck of cards. It is signed. These are the 3D playing cards. Also comes with some 3D glasses because <laughs> you won't be able to see this on camera, of course, but the faces actually have a 3D effect to them. So the court cards especially kind of look like they're popping out at you when you wear the glasses, which is a really, really neat idea. Moving on to the actual stuff that I bought, we're going to start with this, which is, uh, I don't even think it's released yet, so hopefully I'm not breaking anything by showing you this, but um, Ultimate Vanishing Deck by Magic World, which is 
what it sounds like. It's an ultimate vanishing deck. Um, I showed it on camera. Uh, the guy performed it. It looks really, really good. I picked one up myself. Uh, probably to, yeah, again, perform on camera. I think that's the environment it will work best in. This is really weird. I've never done like a magic product haul before. That's not something I do. I don't really review magic products. But anyway, we're, we're, we're moving on. Um, Quantum by Craig Petty. I didn't actually buy this either. I was given this by Craig Petty. Again, thank you so much, Craig. I was literally had my credit card out to buy it and uh, he gave it to me for free, which is incredible. Um, Craig's channel, of course, if you're not subscribed, um, is in the description. Quantum is a brilliant, brilliant trick. Um, I'd heard about it, I'd seen videos, I'd never seen it in person, so it was really good to sort of have it demonstrated live. It's one of those where I'm I'm sort of annoyed at how good it is, because it's like, why didn't I think of this, you know? <laughs> I've been working, literally, true story, I've been working on an any card, any number plot with a blank deck where the only card is printed, and I almost feel like I should give up on <laughs> on creating that trick now because this does that job. It does it so well. It's almost like, what what can I improve on? If I make a version myself, how can it be better than Quantum? So that's how good it is. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Again, thank you, Craig, brilliant. This next one, I might get in trouble for showing this as well. Oh, I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I can show this on camera. Oh, screw it, this is it. It's called Emergence. It's by Vanishing Inc. It's by Tim Hill. It's coming soon, it's going to be released. It may have even been announced or released somewhere, I don't know, uh, but this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna tell you anything more about the trick, I'm not gonna show you anything more, but that is what I got, and it cost me quite a bit of money. It was, I think, 150 pounds, so, you know, quite an investment, but it fooled the pants off me. It's a brilliant trick when it's announced, when it's released. I already recommend it, and I haven't even fully polished it and finished, you know, practicing it, but, <laughs> I am deep into playing with this thing and it is brilliant. So yeah, it gets the thumbs up from me. What was this about me not doing magic reviews? <laughs> Next up is the cheapest thing that I bought at the convention. I stocked up on some coin gaffs. These are all various coin gimmicks. I'm getting really into my coin magic recently. That will shock long-term viewers of the channel who know that I'm not a massive coin guy. Well. That is sort of changing because I am getting really into my coin slights and creating little routines and I've been playing around with the poker chip set, the um, sucker punch set, and I thought, you know what, it's time to invest in the actual coin gimmicks that those things are based on. And so I did. And last, but definitely not least, is this mysterious velvet bag. I'm not gonna tell you what is inside this, not in this video anyway, because I kinda wanna talk about this in a future video when I feel like I can talk about it a little bit more, when, I, when I've got something to show you, because the thing inside here requires quite a bit of practice, and I'm not there yet. Like I said, I've been ill for the past three weeks. I've not really practiced much, to be honest. Um, so yeah, when this is a little more ready, then I can talk about it, but let's just say it would seriously, seriously surprise long-term viewers of the channel, more so than the coin gimmicks. Like, this is, this is way out there for me. So I'm excited to talk about that in a future video. Bit of random hype there for you. Now we need to talk about the rest of the convention, the negatives that I have to do with Blackpool. I wanna preface this segment by saying that this is absolutely not me just moaning for the sake of moaning. This is a genuine problem that I think has quite an easy solution. And believe me when I say this isn't just me that thinks this, I am echoing the thoughts of lots of people who I heard talking about this exact issue while I was there at the convention. And it's very simple. It was too busy. It was just too busy. Never before at Blackpool Magic Convention have I queued for half an hour to get into a lecture and then not got into a lecture because there were so many people. Now, yes, you could put that down to the popularity of the speaker or whatever, there are lots of reasons, but it wasn't just the lectures. It wasn't just the dealer's hall, it was everywhere. There were so many people. You physically, at times in the dealer's hall, could not get to the front to see the trick. You were left in the crowd going, what the heck, what, what are we even meant to be seeing here? Packed in like sardines. It is not a fun experience for people when there are so many people crammed into the Winter Gardens in Blackpool. There were queues snaking through the place 
for even the most ordinary of lecture. Now, yeah, I get it, there are, there are crowd control things, you know, there was security on the doors saying that there is a limit for each lecture, and I totally get that, right? From a fire point of view, from a health and safety point of view, it ticks all those boxes, I get it. Each lecture has to have a maximum capacity. But where were those security guards in the dealer's hall, where we're all packed in like sardines? Surely that is against the health and safety protocols, right? Surely that isn't allowed. I get it in the lectures, fine, but apply that rule to everywhere, because the entire place was rammed. On one of the days, I tried to get into five different lectures slash shows, and I only managed to get into two of them. <laughs> Three out of the five I was turned away from, even though I was there in the queue with hundreds of other people, we were turned away because it was simply too busy. That has never happened to me before, and that shouldn't be happening, because you pay the ticket for the shows and the lectures. Yes, you pay for entry to the dealer's hall, whatever, but for me, the main part of the ticket price is the lectures and the shows. And if I'm not getting into those, I don't feel like I've got my money's worth. I shouldn't be paying a £70 day ticket just for access to the dealer's hall where I'm going to spend more money. That's insane. I think it is magnificent. I think it is a beautiful thing to see so many people gathered together to talk about magic and to see magic and to experience magic. I think these conventions being busy is a great sign and I am all for that. Open the doors to as many people as possible, sure, but up to a certain point because past a certain point, and I think this year the convention was past this certain point, it's just not pleasant. It's just not a good experience. People want to go to experience the biggest magic convention in the world, but if too many people do that, then kind of no one gets to experience it properly. Anyway, there we go. Rant over. Uh, hopefully something is done about that in the future. Uh, let me know what you think down in the description. If you disagree with me, we can still let me know what you think down in the description. Now, how, how would you do that? I told you, I've not made a video in a very long time. I've forgotten where people leave comments. Leave them down in the comments. If you disagree with me, we can still be friends. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button down below. If you didn't enjoy this video, make sure to turn your device upside down and then hit the dislike button. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.